Good day, beloved of God, and welcome to another week's lesson on our CAC Sunday School. We are still in Unit 2 discussing God gives gifts purposefully. And we have discussed in Lesson 9 that He gives His gifts for His glory. In Lesson 10, for the edification, maturity, and perfection of the saints. Lesson 11, for witnessing Christ to the world. And 12, for comforting and uniting the church. So today in Lesson 13, we are looking at the meaningful service and ministry. So our memory scripture is taken from Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 12, which says, For the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. The divisions in the lesson are 1. Meaningful service and ministry to God. And 2. Meaningful service and ministry to one another. So we begin with division 1. Meaningful service and ministry to God. Now this division focuses on serving God. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10 tells us that we were created by God with a purpose, which is to do good works. He plans these good works for us even before we were born, and we were not created to be served, but to serve. And by serving, we bring joy to the one that made us, according to Revelation chapter 4 and verse 11. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, from verse 19 to 20, we are reminded that we don't belong to ourselves. God, with the blood of Jesus Christ, paid a huge price for us, and so we owe him our service. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 3 to 24 reiterates this, but also adds that our service to God should be enthusiastic, knowing that he will reward us. It's not a chore, but an act of love and thanks for his amazing sacrifice. Now, our service to God should be born out of love for him. The greatest commandment as identified by Jesus is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. But how do we serve God in a way that truly matters? See, meaningful service means more than just going through the motions. That is, we should serve God with true passion, with dedication, and with purpose. We should put in genuine effort, serve because we love God and strive for excellence, rather than simply doing it out of tradition or out of obligation. So to truly serve God, we need to align our actions with His will. Romans chapter 12 from verse 1 to 2 tells us to offer ourselves completely to God as a living sacrifice. And so we shouldn't just follow the crowd, but let God change our way of thinking so that we can understand what he wants from us. So according to Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13, this is not what we can do on our own. And so we need the strength of God to accomplish his will. So how do you serve? Do what others think about you affect the way you serve God? Your service should not be to impress people, but to fulfill the desire of God. You should be able to say like Jesus, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Praise the Lord. So our second division, our service to one another. So here we'll be looking at seven others. Jesus continued the speech on the greatest commandment in Matthew chapter 22 and verse 39, saying, And the second is like it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. So following our service to God is seven others. Our love for God is seen in how we love and serve one another. Christianity is a call for service, no matter how little it may be. The Bible tells us in 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 10, that we each have unique gifts, like tools. We are supposed to use them to help others, not bury them away unused. Now, just like the parable of the talents in Matthew chapter 25, from verse 14 to 20, 30, where the unused talents led to a disaster, our lives will become unfulfilled when we don't use our gifts for God's purposes. Our gifts are the solutions to people's challenges in life. So building on 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10, Ephesians chapter 4 verse 16 compares the church to a body. And just like a body works best when each organ does its job, the church works best when everyone uses their spiritual gifts to help the whole group. In Acts chapter 6 from verse 1 to 7, we see a great example of this. When there was a problem with how food was being shared, the apostles found people with specific gifts to solve the problem. Now, this shows how different gifts can be used together for the good of the church family. Our gifts are like body parts that function differently but relies on one another to be a success. John chapter 13 from verse 1 to 17 gives us a powerful example of service in relationships. Jesus, the ultimate leader, washes the disciples' uh, feet, a job normally done by servants. This shows us that true leadership means serving those that we are responsible for, being selfless and not just expecting to be served by them. So before we round up, here are practical examples of how you can serve God and serve others with your gift. So if you have the gift of teaching, you can serve God by leading Bible studies, teaching Sunday school, or mentoring young believers. If yours is the gift of hospitality, you can use your home as a place of fellowship to host small groups. You can engage in welcoming newcomers to church 
or visiting the sick or the needy. And if you have the gift of administration, you can take part in helping other, helping to uh, organize events, manage church finances, lead small groups, or coordinate volunteering efforts within the church community. And with the gift of encouragement, you can uplift others through words of affirmation or supporting those that are going through difficult times and ensuring that everyone feels loved and valued. For those with the gift of music or arts, you can use your talents to lead worship, create visual art for church events, or write and perform songs that glorify God. So a lesson summary, we were created to serve God and others with the gifts that he gives us. And this is not just about being busy. It is the key to a meaningful and fulfilling life. So start using your gifts to serve God faithfully and make a difference in the world around you. So thanks again for being part of today's lesson. We'll continue with lesson 14 next week. I pray you have a great week ahead. God bless you.